That's uh, my IA, obviously, and uh, I tell you, this thing is so beautiful. It uh, it really doesn't. You can't really see all the flame um, when it's viewed straight on. Uh, that's just the way it was carved and, and just the way it was uh, meant to be from Mother Nature. But uh, at different, I mean, it. At, I've never seen a guitar that has so many different viewing angles and so many different looks. Um, and uh, I certainly credit most of that to Ian. Uh, Ian's just brilliant. Um, he uh, went on the pickups too, which are just fantastic. Uh, today I've been uh, playing on my uh, JTM 45. Um, and it's not a revelation, but it's a, uh, the, uh, the way I've got it set up just allows me so, so much room on my guitar. I, I just set it up to the presence being about, uh, oh, what do I got? I got two and a half. Um, the bass is uh, six. Um, and then the mids and uh, treble are all the way up. And then I'm in the first channel, high sensitivity, the high treble. Um, and that volume is on about nine, eight point five. So, and then I take it from here. I put it in the middle position, and then whatever I want to do, you know, if I King thing I try to get it in the middle and get that chirp and then all I add is just a little bit of the neck pickup to make it a little bit thicker but I'm just controlling it from the guitar now maybe it's a little bit noisy um but I think um I think at low volume this thing sounds like it's got uh, uh P90s and then you turn it up uh, and then anything over eight is just it fattens up like uh, you wouldn't believe and it sounds like PAS try to 
to do when I'm when I'm playing uh, lead, I try to put my rhythm in there so that uh, I keep good timing. So in other words, like I'll start out. give your licks some room um, you don't have to play a lick every every beat or anything it just you get these little phrases like because it, you know the chords determine you know what kind of lead you're going to play over it you know I mean and what notes you want to stress um now I can't I can't tell you the names of them I I go all all by ear pretty much a good thing is arpeggios you know you do the notes out of the chord you're on um, so if you move up to C, you know you're an A, and your and your four chord is C, or excuse me, D. <laughs> notes in D in the D chord and then back to A. But I think it makes sense to try to do uh, to try to stay in one position as much as possible and just play the the uh, position or play the notes from the chords in a single position. That way you don't have to go all over the place, but um, it's good to know the notes everywhere, you know, um, which I don't, but I mean, I know, I know which notes I want to hit, I just don't know the names of them. shuffle like say um, okay it's like a quick uh, quick chain shuffle a one two 
a two, a one, two, three. sense in, in you know that first chord. few notes you can you can make sense of the changes there's your four hear the hear the changes you can't just keep you know you can't just play mindlessly in a in a pentatonic and not be aware of the changes because the changes are, are what makes the it makes the uh, blues progression a, a song or a, a, or a tune or a melody you know and you and, you're, and you gotta follow that and uh, you can't just play mindlessly over them you've got to hear the changes and go oh okay I'll, I'll concentrate on these few notes because it sounds good. Well, you got to get those relationships. You got to hear them. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't care if you read music. I don't care if you know the names of them. But you got to you gotta hear it, you know, first. That's the, that's the main thing. Anyway. Anyway, uh, that's a short lesson today. I uh, hope you dug it. Uh, like I said, I uh, hope you can see everything. This is a killer guitar. I love it. And, uh... Hopefully it'll stay with me for a while. Okay, take care everybody. Peace. <laughs>